Hey everyone, Sean Stevenson here, author of the Throne series, which you can find now on Amazon.com or SeanStevensonBooks.com. And I am super excited because today we are going to be talking all about my entire collection of Wizard of Oz books. I have a lot of Wizard of Oz books, some that are very rare, some that are easily gotten, and some that are just super nostalgic to me. So I'm excited to share these with you. There are some from all a bunch of different authors of Oz books, from L. Frank Baum to Ruth Pulley Thompson to Jack Snow to John R. Neal. So I've got a bunch of different ones. I've got a few that are extremely rare. So I'm excited to show you my collection. So let's dive on in. The first few books I'm going to show you are from L. Frank Baum, and these are from the Del Rey editions. So these are the Del Rey editions that came out in the 1980s and 90s. And this is Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, which is book number four in the series. And I really love these Del Rey editions. I know some people don't love them very much, but I actually really like them. These are the ones I grew up checking out from the library. So when I would go to the library, I would find these Del Rey editions, and these are the ones I would check out. I loved the artwork on the covers, but then I also loved that on the inside of these, it still had all of the of traditional like letterings and titles and the artwork from John Arneal in all of these editions. So I really love that they still had this as well as being part of these kind of mass market paperback size books. So this is Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz, book number four in the series. And then one of my favorites, number seven, The Patchwork Girl of Oz. This is one of the longest of the original L. Frank Baum books. And this one is all about the Patchwork Girl, which I don't know if I'll go into all the Oz lore because there's a lot of it and it's convoluted. So. I'm going to probably leave out the lore. But this is book number seven, Del Rey edition, The Patchwork Girl of Oz. And then I also have TikTok of Oz, which is book number eight of the Del Rey editions. And then the next one I have is number 11, my favorite of the original 14 Oz books, The Lost Princess of Oz. And this book, I love this one. It's my favorite. It's such a good mystery in this one, Ozma, the princess of Oz, who's the ruler of Oz, has gone missing, and they don't know where she is. And a lot of the magical artifacts that they have in Oz to help find her, like there's a thing called the magic picture that allows you to look and see where anybody is, and it's missing. Everything is missing. So this one is a great one. I thought it's so interesting, and I love the artwork on the cover of this one for The Lost Princess of Oz, book number 11 of the Del Rey editions. Then after the first 14 Oz books, after L. Frank Baum actually had passed away, Ruth Plumley Thompson became the new Oz historian and started writing Oz books. So book number 15 was originally attributed, attributed, to L. Frank Baum, but it was actually written by Ruth Plumley Thompson, and that is the Royal Book of Oz. It's interesting when they get to the Ruth Plumley Thompson editions of the Oz books in the Del Rey series, they're a little bit bigger than the L. Frank Baum ones. They're a slightly larger size, but again, they still keep all of that original artwork that's inside of the Oz books and the way that the pages were spread, which is really awesome. So this is book number 15, The Royal Book of Oz. Book number 16, Kabumpo in Oz. This one's another great fun book. Book number 18, which is Grandpa in Oz. This one's so interesting. This is a really interesting one. This one's a really tattered edition, and on someday I'll hope to get a better edition of this one, but it is book number 19, The Lost King of Oz. And this one's really similar in a lot of ways to The Lost Princess of Oz, because you find out that Ozma's father is also missing somewhere, so they have to figure out where he is. But as you can see, this edition, it's an old library edition, so it's a little bit falling apart in some ways. So this is book number 19, The Lost King of of Oz. And then book number 20, The Hungry Tiger of Oz, which is such a great cover. I love that there's the fire all in the background and you have all the characters there, the hungry tiger and the turnip guy. I can't remember what his name is right now, but there's a book later coming that we could look in to check and see what his name is. So this is book number 20, The Hungry Tiger of Oz. And then book number 21, The Gnome King of Oz. 
I love that these Ruth Plumley Thompson ones kind of took like these side characters that were in the original 14 books and just continued to write about them and like tell the stories all about them. Then in book number 22, we have the giant horse of Oz. And this one is slightly misprinted on the spine, but that's okay. That is the giant horse of Oz. Book number 23 is one of my favorites. It is the pumpkin head of Oz and it's all about Jack Pumpkinhead. So that is a fun one. Book number 24, I don't know what was going on with the printing, but they started printing them kind of giant size. And this is the Yellow Knight of Oz, book number 24. But as you can see, it's like larger than the other ones were. So I don't know what was up with that. And also it gave like extra space in the margins. So that was kind of interesting. I don't know what happened, like I said, with the printing of these, but this, this is the Yellow Knight of Oz, book number 24. And then another one of my favorites, Pirates in Oz. I love pirate stories. So Pirates in Oz with the flying pig, love it. This is Pegasus, it's so great. So this is Pirates in Oz, book number 25 in the series. And then book number 26 is The Purple Prince of Oz. And then another large size one, this is Ojo in Oz, which is book number 27. So I almost have a full set of these Del Rey Ruth Plumley Thompson ones. Speedy in Oz, book number 28. So this one's really cool because you have Terry Bubble is a living dinosaur skeleton. So it's kind of awesome. So that is Speedy in Oz. And then the last Del Rey edition I have is The Wishing Horse of Oz, which is book number 29. This one's plot blew me away. It went back to, I think, the days of L. Frank Baum books where there was some real serious danger from the villains, and I thought this was a really, really good book. So this was number 29, The Wishing Horse of Oz, which is another one of those large, oversized ones. So those are all the Del Rey edition Oz books that I have. So a couple other ones. I have these ones. I don't exactly know much about these editions, but it says that this one, The Magic of Oz, which is book number 13, is from Contemporary Books, Inc., so The Magic of Oz by L. Frank Baum. This is from the original 14 books, book number 13. And then I also have The Scarecrow of Oz, which is book number eight in the original series. And this one was put out by Regnery Press. So, but it looks just the same in my opinion as these. So I'm not sure what the difference is on these ones, but I liked these additions because it preserved the original artwork from the covers of the old ones, as well as the inside has the same chapter headings and title headings as the old books. It also has all the pictures and everything in here too that you have in all those traditional Oz books. So those are the two that I have that are kind of outlier ones from the L. Frank Baum original 14 books. This is a Books of Wonder edition from a uh, Ruth Plumley Thompson book. This is Handy Mandy in Oz. I've actually never read this Oz book. It's one of the few that I haven't read. So Handy Mandy in Oz, she is a milkmaid with eight arms or seven. How many arms does she have? I can't remember how. She has like seven or eight arms, I believe. So, but this is Handy Mandy in Oz, a Ruth Plumley Thompson book. After L. Frank Baum and after Ruth Plumley Thompson, there was John R. Neal, who was actually the one who did all the illustrations for the original 30 something books of the Oz series from L. Frank Baum and Ruth Plumley Thompson. And so I have John R. Neal's, a couple of his, I'm gonna show you the rare ones that I have in a minute of his, but, this is an edition from Books of Wonder, Lucky Bucky in Oz. It's a hardback with the jacket and everything. This is a really awesome edition of Lucky Bucky in Oz. I really liked this one. He's with this giant wooden whale named Davy Jones, and he's on an adventure through Oz. I really loved this book. I thought it was a lot of fun, Lucky Bucky in Oz. Some people don't like the John R. Neal books. I thought they're a lot of fun. I really like the storylines. They're very random. Uh, I would say that they're not always the best written, as well as L. Frank Baum's or Ruth Plumley Thompson's even, but Lucky Bucky and Oz I thought was a really fun story. After John R. Neal did three books, it then transitioned to a new Oz historian, Jack Snow, and he put out three books, two Oz stories, and then one that is a compendium of Oz characters. So. The first one, this is a Books of Wonder edition, The Magical Mimics in Oz, and this one, oh, 
I remember reading this one when I was a kid, and this one was amazing, and it still is. I reread it not that long ago, and it holds up because in this one, there are these shape shifting creatures in Oz who can mimic people, and they are evil, and they are going to try and take over all of Oz, and they do. So, this one is a really well done book. So, I loved this one The Magical Mimics in Oz by Jack Snow. This one. The illustrator was Frank Kramer, but it keeps some of the similar style as John R. Neal's artwork did, as well as those top headers they kept from the original Oz books. So that one's a lot of fun, the magical mimics in Oz. Then we had the sequel one that John Jack Snow wrote, and that is the Shaggy Man of Oz, which is so great because the Shaggy Man was an interesting character L. Frank Baum came up with who has this thing called the love magnet that allows people to love one another and be kind to one another. And so it's kind of the story of like, what was that all about? So this is the Shaggy Man of Oz. This is actually one of my rarer books that I own. This edition was from, I believe, the 60s. It was originally sold for, I'm going to carefully turn this around, 275 that's crazy, $2.75. So this one goes for quite a bit now, this particular edition. But this is one of my rare editions. I have the plastic cover on the jacket to keep it safe. And so this is The Shaggy Man of Oz by Jack Snow. Another great, great book. I loved Jack Snow's stories. I wish he had done more of them. And then another rare Oz book that I have is Who's Who in Oz by Jack Snow. And this was put up by Peter Bedrick Books. And what this one is, is it's a compendium of every single Oz character alphabetically listed. And it tells you about what book they premiered in, all about them. It's all about these different Oz characters. And it's compiled by Jack Snow. And he has like little paragraphs about each character there. So this one's a really cool book. Again, like this one is a rarer one. It's harder to find. But that is who's who in Oz. Now, before I show you my super rare old Oz books, I want to show you just three other books that I have by L. Frank Baum that are not technically part of the Oz series, but they are part of the larger Oz universe. If you look at maps in like the who's who in Oz here, let me take up a jacket real quickly. The Who's Who in Oz has this map of the Book of Oz, of the Land of Oz, and there are all these different locations around Oz, around the Deadly Desert, and then there's different countries. And these books take place in those countries with some different Oz characters. These are three books that are about the worlds of Oz around it. So the first one is The Magical Monarch of Mo by L. Frank Baum, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really love this book. It's kind of boring, in my opinion. I know some people might not like that, but I just didn't, I couldn't really get into it. I thought it was interesting, but it just was not my favorite. So that's The Magical Monarch of Mo by L. Frank Baum. This is a Dover edition. And then I also have the Dover edition of The Sea Fairies by L. Frank Baum. Now this one I really liked. This one has two characters from Oz books in it. It has um, Captain Bill and Trot. And so those two characters are in this book and it's on their journey uh, that they go through meeting the sea fairies. And it's also was illustrated by John R. Neal. So it has a really great Oz book feel, even though it's not part technically of the Oz series. It's almost like a spin-off story about two characters from the Oz universe, Captain Bill and Trot. And then I also, I talked about this in my Christmas books video, but The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum. This is a fun little hardback edition. I really like this story. It's a lot of fun about Santa's origins and like where did Santa Claus come from? And it also contains worlds that are around the land of Oz, just like in Magical Monarch of Mo and the Sea Fairies. So that is The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. Now to some of my old rare Oz books that I have. These ones are all the old school ones that are from the 1930s and earlier. So this one is a copy of The Wizard of Oz. It is obviously a very old book. I got this from someone who was actually giving it away and they said, hey, do you want this? And I said, yes, I do. I will take that. This one is not by Riley and Lee. It's a different um, publisher. And like I said, it is falling apart. So I want to put it down here in a second. But this is the first book in the series, The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. The next one I have is 
Rink-a-Tink in Oz. And this one, unfortunately, it had some little glue where someone had put a sticker at one time. Why would you do it? Why? Oh, it's so sad. But so it had a sticker glue at one time on there. But this is Rink-a-Tink in Oz. And this one is a Riley and Lee edition. So this one is an older one. It's pretty rare and pretty expensive. Um, it has like so many beautiful um, pages. This does not have the full color plates inside, but I do have one that does. So the next one is a Ruth Plumley Thompson book. And this is probably my rarest one. And I would love to get this one appraised sometime, but this is Kabumpo in Oz. Now this book is very fascinating because it has, let me carefully open to one. It has the full color plates inside, but also this edition is misprinted and has a double set of several pages at the end. So the chapters are actually kind of messed up because they reprinted some parts, including some of the full color plates. So this is a very rare one. Um, this one is actually one that my parents had given to me because my parents got it at a garage sale. They got it at a garage sale way back in, I believe the 90s or 80s, the early 90s, uh, late 80s. And so this is Kabumpo in Oz. This is a pretty rare one. The next one I have is one that my wife got me actually most recently. She found a copy of Jack Pumpkinhead of Oz, which I love this cover so much. I think it's so great, Jack Pumpkinhead of Oz. And so this one is another Riley and Lee edition. It does not have the full color plates, but it is an older copy that is pretty rare. And then I got at a used bookstore a long time ago, a copy of Pirates in Oz. Again, I love this cover by Ruth Plumley Thompson. I love on the spines, they have the different characters that are there. This is a Riley and Lee edition. This one does not have the full color plates, but this is Pirates in Oz. And then I have the sequel to that one, which I don't have in any other form. It, so I need to read this one, but I don't want to read this edition. But I have Captain Salt in Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. And so this one, there is that little rip on the cover, which is so sad, but it's another pretty rare, pretty old one by Riley and Lee Publishers. Again, it has a boat on the side. So this is just a cool, cool old editions of Oz books. Oh, they're so amazing. And then I have my John R. Neal old one, The Scallywagons of Oz. And this is, like I said, just one of those stories that's so random and strange, but it's a lot of fun. This is another Riley and Lee. This is the, I believe the first or the second book that John R. Neal wrote. He only wrote three, or well, he wrote four, but he wrote three originally, and then he wrote a fourth one much later. But this is The Scallywagons of Oz with that little scallywagon head on the side. It's so great. So those are my super rare Oz books. Now I'm gonna show you some of my other Oz books that are kind of thought of as not part of the original, the what they call the famous 40. That's the Ruth Pullman Thompson, L. Frank Baum, John R. Neal, including Jack Snow books. And so after those, there were other people who wrote Oz stories. And Oz stories are still being written today. People are writing these books still because there's a whole community around Oz that loves these books, loves these adventures. So let me, let me get all those books. Okay, so just a couple other side things that I have. I have the Wizard of Oz hardback um, picture book edition. I'm not gonna show you the very back yet because it's one of my favorite things. But this one is kind of like a truncated telling of the first book of Wizard of Oz and it has a lot of the original artwork in it. I thought this was a cool edition, but on the back, why I keep this one is because it has a picture of Return to Oz, the film that came out in the 1980s, I believe 1985. I love this movie. It's the one that got me into Oz in the beginning. So that is one of the things I love about this. So that is the Wizard of Oz, a picture book. And then I also have, speaking of Return to Oz, I have, my wife got me these. It is the Return to Oz card set. So there's a bunch of different cards in here and they have pictures from the 
from the movie. It has, this is actually a sticker that's right there uh, on that card. So there's a lot of different really cool things. Um, if you collect, it's a collection of different cards and you can put the pictures together to form larger pictures. It's super cool. My wife got this for me one Christmas. So those are my Return to Oz cards. And then on to some of my other Oz books that we have. So I have always loved the fountain that is outside the Emerald City because it's just such a great feature in a lot of different Oz books, especially the Emerald City of Oz, book number six. And so I was always intrigued by this book because I would see it on different lists online and I was like, I want to read that. And so finally I got myself a copy of The Forbidden Fountain of Oz. And in this one, it's a really great story about Ozma drinks from the fountain and goes on an adventure. So it's a really interesting edition. It's very large and unfortunately the way it was printed has a lot of text on a page. So I have read this. It was kind of a chore to read, but I liked the story so much that it kept me going. So that is The Forbidden Fountain of Oz. And this one is by Elise Jarvis McGraw and Lauren Lynn McGraw. They wrote a couple of different Oz books. So that is The Forbidden Fountain of Oz. And then I have Eric Shanower. He is a guy who does a lot of comics and he made some Oz comics at one point. And so I love these. This one is The Enchanted Apples of Oz. And it's a full, you know, full comic book uh, throughout this whole um, story. So it's not very long, but I really love the artwork that's in these. It's done, uh, written and illustrated by Eric Shanower. So this is the Enchanted Apples of Oz. And then I also have the Secret Island of Oz by Eric Shanower. This is a first graphic novel. So this, these are really just they're so fun. I love that it's a comic. I love the art style. It's great. This one is The Ice King of Oz. So that is another one in this graphic, graphic novel, I guess, comic book series. And then this one's my favorite of all five of these. It is The Forgotten Forest of Oz. The storyline in this one is a lot of fun because they go outside of Oz and there's a lot of stuff with the Deadly Desert which if you don't know about the Deadly Desert, the Deadly Desert is this place where if any living thing touches it, then they turn to sand. So it's a really interesting storyline about going over the Deadly Desert and then going to fight some imps that are trying to attack. So the last one I have of these is The Blue Witch of Oz, and this is actually a Dark Horse Comics edition of this book. So this one is another one in that series of those comic books by Eric Shanower. Then in the 90s, they put out a series of magazines of Oz stories. And this is number one, it's called Oz Story. It's like a magazine that has a bunch of different stories in it. TikToks on the back. It has a ton of different stories in it that you can read that are kind of, some of them are sometimes have full novels. Um, this one has also old novels from L. Frank Baum that are really hard to find printed in the edition. So that is the first one, the Oz story number one. And then I also have Oz story number three. So this has another set of different stories. It has some comic pages, all different written by different people. So this one also has the full novel called The Flying Girl by L. Frank Baum, which is a hard to find book by L. Frank Baum, but it's the whole book is all printed in this edition of Oz Story number three. These are really cool. I really like these. I believe they had six of these, so I have two of them so far. I've gotta find the rest. And then this is a fun one that my wife got me a few Christmases ago. It's an adult coloring book called Welcome to Oz, illustrated by Eric Shanower. So I haven't done any of them because I don't wanna ruin it. But these are adult coloring books from all different scenes from Oz stories. So those are super fun, the Welcome to Oz adult coloring book. And then other people have written Oz stories and these are considered part of like the continued Oz universe. So a couple different ones I have here. There's a whole series of them that were put out by Emerald City Press that are all similar in kind of style but written by different authors. So this is The Speckled Rose of Oz by Donald Abbott. I have not read this one yet but it's a short little book and it has a, some funny illustrations in it, but that is The Speckled Rose of Oz. 
This one I have read. This one is by Bill Campbell and Erwin Terry, and it is Masquerade in Oz. And this is kind of a Halloween-themed Oz book. It's all about the patchwork girl. So it's a lot of fun. The people, they put on some costumes, and then they start to become the people that they're dressed up as. And so it's a whole mess that the patchwork girl has to fix. So that is the Masquerade in Oz. This one's actually really well done. I really liked the writing in it. I thought it captured the spirit of the original series. Then there's also by Bill Campbell and Erwin Terry, another good one by them, is The Lavender Bear of Oz. And I just feel like these two authors really capture the spirit of the original Oz books pretty well. I wish they had done more. They ha don't have, I don't think there's any more by them. But this one I've read too, it's really well done. It's in the spirit of the original Oz books, The Lavender Bear of Oz. And then this one I've talked about in my Christmas video, but this is Christmas in Oz. And this one is by Robin Hess and illustrated by Andrew Hess. And Christmas in Oz is a fun one. I really liked this one. It's a light read, really easy. It's all about a girl named Mary Christmas Peterson who goes to Oz and meets Santa Claus, obviously. And so it's kind of a Christmas themed Oz book, which is a lot of fun. And then this one, it has a bookmark in it. And I will admit, I have been trying my best to read it, but it's just not very good. But this is the Gnome King Shadow in Oz. <sighs> it's This one is by Gilbert Sprague and it's just not very good, unfortunately. I have been trying to read it and trying to get into it and I still have a bookmark just in case I ever decide to try and just power through it, but this one's not that great. But this one is the Gnome King's Shadow in Oz. And then there was a brand new Oz Adventure series. I got this book a long time ago. I don't even remember where, but this is Dorothy and the Magic Belt. They're kind of like early readers from Random House set in the Oz universe with different Oz characters. And I believe there's five of these books. I only have this one. I've been trying to get the rest of them, but this is the only one that I have. So this is the Dorothy and the Magic Belt. And then I have one of my newest acquisitions of Oz books. I'm super excited about this one because this one I had never heard of. So this one is by the great grandson of L. Frank Baum, Roger S. Baum, and that is The Green Star of Oz, a special Oz story. So this one I haven't read yet. I'm excited to read it. It's a hardback edition, which I thought was really awesome. This one is put out by Over Mountain Press in Johnson City, Tennessee. And when I got this at the used bookstore, I didn't even realize it till I got home and started looking at it that it was signed by Roger S. Baum. So I was like, oh, that's so awesome. So this one, I'm excited to read it, see what happens in it. It's a very special Oz story about L. Frank Baum. So I want to see what happens in this, the green star of Oz. So that is my entire Oz collection, all of the books I have, plus some fun little extras. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you're an Oz fan, let me know in the comments below what Oz books have you read? Have you read any of these? Are there any that you're interested in reading or ones that you see here that you thought, I've never heard of that one before. So Oz is a lot of fun. It's a great series, I think, that captures that fantasy and just escapism that sometimes we need, you know, it's okay. So I think Oz is a lot of fun. It's a fun adventure story throughout all these different fantasy adventures. And so if you've read any of the Oz books, let me know. Well, that's it for now. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.